Today I'm speaking with Chris Gibb, who is the CEO of, of American Rare Earth. And uh, Chris, you have, it's my understanding that you've had this job before, is that correct? Correct. I was uh, yeah, the, uh, the CEO of American Rare Earth from uh, 2021 through to uh, about this time last year. And okay. then stepped off, took a, a role on the board as a non-executive director. And you now have me back, Jack. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Can you bring us up to date for the current status of the project in Wyoming? Sure. Not a problem, Jack. Look, uh, as you know, we've got this uh, outstanding project in Wyoming, um, the Hallett Creek Project. And uh, this project yeah, has been yeah, getting developed for a, a short while here. And we have a, a resource on this project of 2.34 billion tonnes. And just recently, we uh, completed a, a round of drilling, which uh, is all around uh, defining the resource in what we call the Cowboy State Mine Area. And the reason why we're focused on this area called the Cowboy State Mine Area, Jack, is that it's a, it's a portion of the deposit, um, which is on state lands. And uh, this enables us with a, a fast track through to uh, permitting you know, for this project. And so uh, we completed the drilling here. We've got state funding from the Wyoming government for uh, you know, essentially matching funding for this project. So great government you know, support. The project is uh, close by you know, great infrastructure. And uh, yet we're uh, rapidly advancing this project to uh, you know, focus on producing, not just from the mining side, but to producing a metal product. That's that's our vision. So uh, at, at the moment, um, we uh, came out with a scoping study you know, earlier in the year. And right now, the reason for this round of drilling is to uh, support an upcoming PFS for the project. So oh, if, if you're planning to produce rare earth metal, for example, that means you you have a, you have a, already got have a process scheme worked out uh, that you're going to use to produce the separated rare earth oxides necessary to make the metal. Is, is that correct? You you you've done that work. At the moment, Jack, where we've uh, been focusing on is the uh, first stage of the benefication process, and yes. uh, the uh, in terms of you know, we've been doing the lab test work as well in terms of producing through to a metal. Um, I've, I've been across this spectrum in the past, Jack, um, having you know, been in, in the game before um, and uh, you know, built built mines and uh, run metals facilities. And so uh, you know, the real value add here is not just producing a concentrate and it's producing all the way through to an oxide. And we've got the people, we've got the uh, the technology and you know, it's you know, taking it from a concentrate through, yeah, and, and right now the process we're using is really solvent extraction. Um, it, uh, yeah, it, it bodes well. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited in terms of what this means, but it is to uh, go across that spectrum because that's the opportunity, Jack, just producing a concentrate and shipping that off to uh, China or Estonia is not the way forward. We need to be producing a, a metal here for the folks in the United States and to uh, that's that, that's the plan. Uh, I admit that personally, I haven't been in Wyoming since 1967. All right, but uh, when I was there, I didn't notice a large infrastructure for processing rare earths or making rare earth metals. So, are, 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 it sounds to me like you're planning to do this in the United States, the processing. That, that's correct, Jack, and. Uh, the uh, the plan is to do it in the state of Wyoming. <clears throat> okay. We have uh, outstanding support from the state of Wyoming, yep. and yeah, if you take you know, where our you know, the Hallett Creek project is, it's about two and a half hours you know, north of Denver, just uh, you know, outside of uh, a town called Laramie, and also uh, Wheatland, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, close by. Well. Essentially, bitumen roads run straight past this. We've got a high voltage uh, KV lines running straight past the property. Um, in the town of Wheatland, you've got a, a large you know, power station. And our plans are to actually be building the uh, you know, refinery 
locally to uh, you know, within that industry and uh, close by all that infrastructure. So uh, it's yeah, it couldn't be a better location. What's the time, assuming everything works out, what's your timeline for, for deliverables that are payables? Okay, in terms of the timeline, Jack, as you know, yeah, there's a number of variables that yeah, go through that timeline. Um, I've yeah, One of the biggest variables there, yeah, particularly in the United States, is around permitting. And yeah, one of the things we've already started is our environmental baseline monitoring and our uh, yeah, preparations for our state permit. And the timeline we've been given on that permitting is yeah, less than two years. And that's that has already started. So it, yeah, our, our, when I say our hope, it's our plan to actually have that permitting in hand well before that two years. So the permitting will not be the critical path here. The critical path uh, is really around um, yeah, completing the engineering from the, uh, like I said, we've got this pre-feasibility study, which our plan is to complete that in the first half of this you know, next coming year. And then from there, we'll be rolling in through to the various, you know, again, completing the engineering, putting in place a pilot facility, and then you know, getting the relevant funding to uh, then build this. So in terms of a timeline, Jack, um, I'm not going to put out an exact timeline, but I can tell you that from my previous experience, uh, where I you know, was building a mine in you know, Ontario, taking it through that process, yeah, it, it is a... You know, around a three to five year process to really go you know, from you know, where we're really at today through to uh, to this. And that's not a, you know, that goes very quickly. And uh, that's that's the sort of timeline I'd be anticipating that we yeah, we'd be working towards. Uh, Chris, this this sounds to me like you've done it before, have you? Look, in terms of uh, yeah, what, what I've done before, Jack, is <laughs> I've done a lot of different things. Um, I don't I've, mean uh, rare earths. I mean, have you developed mines before? I've developed mines before and uh, in North America. And uh, that's from taking you know, from essentially concept. And uh, the uh, your most recent one was, you know, we're involved with Argonaut Gold um, from, uh, from concept, taking that through all the way through to uh, construction and a mining team on site. I, yeah. I, I did leave at the back end to uh, come and join American Rare Earths, um, but from a you know, bring it through commissioning and online, I was involved with the Mount Milligan project up in British Columbia. And I've also uh, run metals refinery in Pittsburgh, Jack, um, producing metal products where we uh, were producing you know, a variety of metal products, even rhenium. Um, we put in place a rhenium processing facility and uh, we're selling rhenium into the market along with you know, metal products, you know, molybdenum related metal products and pure products as well. Not wow. you know, 99.95% uh, you know, pure molybdenum. I have to tell you yeah. that if yeah. you've been in rhenium processing, uh, all of the experts I know of in that area could fit in a phone booth with plenty of room left over for a grand piano. So I'm, I'm very <laughs> impressed. Jack. I did not know that about your background. Uh, well, you want to Jack, talk about I'll, it? I'll be the first to say, <laughs> Jack, I, I'm not the uh, technical guy that uh, was uh, yeah, built that rhenium plant, but uh, no, no, I, I understand I, that. I, uh, uh, I'm familiar uh, with that uh, rhenium plant, so I, I'm quite impressed. Uh, okay, so now um, let's talk about you know the unpleasant part. How are you doing on financing? Look, on financing right now, our uh, financing we've got the uh, non-diluted government funding from the state of Wyoming, and that's yep. uh, over $7 million US. And the way that funding works is every dollar we spend, essentially we get back 50 cents in the dollar. And so uh, that's you know, more than sufficient for where we're at for this stage of the pro project. Um, mm -hmm. In addition to that, we've got uh, you know, you know, some cash in the bank and then other investments but from a cash perspective around uh, 14 million. And so we've got a good financial position. Um, the you know, the reason we've you know, created Wyoming Rare USA Inc. is you know, as a wholly owned subsidiary is that we recognise that to move this project forward, we do need to partner you know, with somebody or bring in a strategic investor. 
Um, you know, we we recognise where we're at. We've got a great project, and but yeah, it it will require us to have that strategic investor or you know, JV partner to to move it forward. Um, but at the same time, running concurrently with that, Jack, we are yeah. Yeah, looking at the various opportunities from a yeah, even a federal funding perspective, and I'm sure as well we'll have further state support. This project, Jack, and there's no other project like this, it's the largest rare earth project for neodymium praseodymium in the heart of the United States. It's in a great mining jurisdiction, the state of Wyoming. He needs, yeah, the state of Wyoming needs yeah, industry and they they're very supportive of what we're doing. And so, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's going to be more funding and this is a, a critical mineral for the United States. And so, uh, yeah, that, that's our focus. And I'm, yeah, the financing, we believe, will come, but we've got to obviously do the work as well to uh, to prove out the project. There, as you know, there's only one producing rare earth mine in the Americas right now. Okay, and all yeah. of the output of that mine is sold to the... Chinese. So basically, sure. the United States has no domestic source of rare earth. And I don't know who's going to be first to actually be a domestic supplier. But to be honest with you, unless you know something, I don't. I don't know anybody who's at your, even at your stage of development. So I have to wish you very good luck. And I, the reason I'm less talkative than usual it's because your background is extremely extensive and pertinent. Uh, and I don't know too many CEOs of mining companies who've ever built a mine. I mean, I do know one or two, but I believe that's about 98% of those in the United States. Okay. And uh, I'm adding you to my list. Okay. And I, I wish, no, I'm sorry. I, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, you're a very impressive guy. Let's hope that you could make this a very impressive project. We're going to stay tuned, and I'm going to call you back uh, every so often to find out what you're up to, because I'm wondering what you're really up to. <laughs> thank, thank you, Chris. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Jack. appreciate you, too. Take care.